Do Westerners still see Chinese engines as knockoffs? The Middle East's wealthy are lining up to buy them. Just as Western media finished blasting Chinese engines as knockoffs, the data hit back hard. A specific domestic turbofan sold 2,000 units in two years, with wealthy Middle Eastern buyers literally lining up with cash, while comparable European and American engines are collecting dust in warehouses. The contrast is unbelievable. Aero engines are often called the crown jewel of industry. And this dazzling gem is at the heart of a struggle between a century of Western technical dominance and China's push to break through. Take a certain Western turbofan engine as an example. Its single thrust can reach 35 tons, allowing heavy passenger planes to make ultra-long-range flights. But it has a fatal flaw, a glass heart. It needs a deep overhaul every 1,000 flight hours, with a single maintenance cost of up to $20 million, almost enough to buy half a used regional jet. In contrast, China's self-developed turbofan series, while having some gaps in thrust compared to top-tier models, uses a unique composite material thermal barrier coating and a modular design to extend its overhaul interval to 4,000 hours, pushing a single maintenance cost down to $6 million, just 27% of its western counterpart. During high-altitude and cold region tests, the domestic engine ran continuously for 72 hours without a single issue, allowing fighter jets to complete missions over the roof of the world. This demonstrates a reliability as tough as a workhorse, drastically reducing logistics pressure and truly achieving a usable and dependable military-grade quality. Even more groundbreaking, a decade ago, China had to buy engines from Russia. Now, it not only builds its own, but it has sold military turbofans to Pakistan, and even neighbors of NATO allies are quietly placing orders. Today, we're going to uncover the secrets behind this. Why are Western engines not selling? Why are the Middle East's elite clamoring for Chinese ones? What game-changing moves are hidden in China's engines? 1. The Fall of the Western Tech Myth A 2000 vs 100 Crushing Victory who would have thought that the Chinese WS-10B turbofan, which Westerners call a knockoff, would have an export volume of 2,000 units in just two years? In the same period, America's Pratt & Whitney F-110 engine only sold 180 units in the Middle East, and Europe's EJ-200 did even worse, with less than 100 sales for the entire year. The key difference lies in the numbers. The Pratt & Whitney engine has a unit price of $15 million, with a maintenance cost of $30,000 per flight hour. The Chinese turbofan's unit price is less than $8 million, and its maintenance cost is slashed to $8,000. What's even more ironic is that just as German media spread rumors of China stealing technology, the Daimler Group was quick to clarify that China had long since stopped developing naval engines and that the technology in question had nothing to do with China. Looking back at modern industrial history, Western aero engine giants used their first mover advantage to build a fortified technical wall, holding tech monopoly equals market dominance as a core belief. They marketed their precise engines as the Hermes of the industrial world, selling them for tens of millions of dollars. The follow-up maintenance services were a black hole for customer funds, the cost to replace a single blade could buy a luxury car, and the labor cost for troubleshooting could be more expensive than gold. The essence of this distorted business model was to see global customers as sheep to be fleeced, using information asymmetry and technical blockades to reap huge profits. However, the rise of China's aero engine industry completely subverted this dominant logic. From the difficult first flight of the Taihang engine to the stunning debut of the Changjiang series, Chinese R&D teams showed 10 years of dedication, breaking through more than 500 key technologies with their hardcore innovation to dismantle the Western technical monopoly. When a domestic engine can achieve more than 90% of the performance metrics of its international counterparts at two-thirds of the price, and when a transparent after-sales service system compresses maintenance costs to one-fifth of the original, this comeback is more than just product competition. It's the market's rules delivering a decisive blow against technical hegemony. 
Data shows that after a certain domestic turbofan engine went into production, its imported counterparts were forced to drop their prices by 40%, proving that cost-effectiveness is the ultimate competitive advantage in industrial products. This is not just a victory for made in China, but the most powerful rebuttal to technical arrogance. 2. The Middle East's elite aren't fools. Who wants to pay for delicate goods? In the deserts of the Middle East, a Uchai YC6MK engine is powering a bus at 50 degrees Celsius, while American Cummins engines frequently break down. Last year, out of 200 Cummins engines purchased by Saudi Arabia, 47 broke down in just three months, and a maintenance team had to fly in from the US, with a waiting period of over half a month. In contrast, Chinese engines can withstand high temperatures and sandstorms, can be repaired by local workshops, and parts can arrive the same day. It's no wonder the Middle East's wealthy are willing to wait in line for Chinese goods rather than deal with delicate European and American products. After all, for those who depend on transportation, every day stopped is a day of lost money. The choice of Middle Eastern buyers reveals the truth. Whether technology is good or not isn't decided by Western media, but by real-world performance. In a combat data comparison at a Saudi Air Force base, while a top-tier European-slash-American turbofan engine showed excellent performance on paper, its intake design couldn't handle desert sand, leading to a blade wear rate three times higher than the standard. It also required an engineer from the original manufacturer to fly in for repairs, with an average downtime of 30 days. In contrast, during early research, the Chinese R&D team designed their engines specifically for the high temperature and sandstorm conditions of the Middle East, using a three-stage dust filter and a self-cleaning coating technology. This kept the average annual failure rate at 0.8% and compressed the maintenance response time to within 72 hours. This difference isn't just about technical parameters. It reflects two completely different R&D philosophies. Western companies are used to building technical walls with lab data, while Chinese engineers go into the oil fields and testing ranges to turn the demand for stable operation in extreme environments into quantifiable design specs. When a purchasing manager from a certain country remarked that the Chinese engine's maintenance manual is thicker than its user manual, this slightly satirical comment is the most vivid praise for customer demand-driven R&D. This pragmatic spirit which embeds user pain points into every component, earns far more respect and trust from the global market than any empty tech myth. 3. From begging to buy. 2. Fighting to get. China's decade-long engine breakthrough. Who remembers that in 2012, the Z-10 helicopter was forced to use a domestic turboshaft 9 engine because it couldn't get a Canadian one, cutting its power by 20%? Or that in 2015, the J-10 still had to rely on Russia's AL-31F engine? But things are different now. The turboshaft 9C's power has caught up to 1,200 kilowatts, and the Z-10Me is now selling to Pakistan. The WS-10B has become a standard for the J-20 and J-10C and is even being exported. What's even more impressive is the three-engine design of the J-36 fighter jet, with even U.S. media admitting that this complexity could not be copied, China truly has mastered core technologies. From relying on imports to exporting, Chinese engines have followed a path full of challenges but always moving forward. In the 1990s, when the West used the Wassenaar arrangement to build a technical blockade, trying to kill China's aero engine industry in its infancy, researchers lit the first spark of hope in basic workshops. Without high-precision CNC machines, they used their hands to calibrate tolerances. Lacking wind tunnel data, they carried equipment across plateaus and deserts to collect real-world parameters. This, the tougher the better, resilience led to the successful finalization of the Taihang engine in 2006, breaking a half-century-long foreign monopoly on high-thrust turbofan engines. Those who still push the knockoff narrative might be ignoring a key fact. When the C919 passenger plane, powered by the domestic CJ1000 AX engine, first flew, its 3D woven composite fan blade technology already surpassed the design concepts of its European and American counterparts. 
when the three-engine parallel drone power system made a stunning appearance at the Zhuhai Air Show. This unprecedented layout not only solved the challenge of high-altitude takeoff and landing but also became an innovative model for the global aviation power industry. During extreme environment tests in Turpan's 50 degrees Celsius heat and Dunhuang's strong sandstorms, domestic engines ran with almost zero failure, silencing Western manufacturers who had arrogantly claimed that China won't be able to build a qualified engine in 20 years. Looking back at the past decade, from the continuous iteration of the Taihang series to the rise of the Chaojiang engine family, from achieving autonomous control of military aviation power to commercial breakthroughs with high bypass ratio civil engines, every technical leap has been the most powerful answer to the doubters. This confidence in their comeback doesn't just come from millions of simulations in a lab. It comes from the dedication of countless researchers who do earth-shattering work while remaining anonymous. They used their youth and passion to forge what was once a choke point into a power heart, shining with Chinese ingenuity. The story of Chinese engines isn't over yet. The next breakthrough might be in the large aircraft engines monopolized by the West. Want to know what technical moves China is hiding? Follow me, and next time, we'll expose the Chinese designs that the West is secretly imitating. Thanks for reading, and I'll see you in the comments.